Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today we are opening a scroller box. I can't actually believe how quickly this has arrived. I had the email notify me yesterday it was on the way and here it is today. The first thing I thought with this box is this is heavy and quite rightly so there is a lot of paint in there. And upon discovering the print by Julian Reynolds, by all means check out their media, I thought, right, it's definitely a painty box. I shall go through the ingredients. So we have Sennelier Abstract Matte Soft Body Acrylic. And the three colours of those we have Cadmium Red Deep Hue, Indigo Blue, and everyone's favourite Titanium White. Also in the box is a Dela Roni Simply Acrylic Paint Marker, a Koenor Hard Mouth Magic Pencil, a Pro Art Skull Acryl Brush, and that is in size 6. Our surface to work on is the System 3 Acrylic Paper 360 G's, the 6 sheets of it, and that is made by Dela Roni. So yes, let's get them swatched out. So the Koenor pencil, I'll be honest with you, I am not a fan of these. It has three colours combined into one pencil and it's very random when you draw with it. The colours in the pencil are white, red and blue to match the paint, but to be honest, I don't get anything from these. I don't feel like I can work properly with them and they remind me of novelty items I would have had as a child. I know this isn't the first time scroll boxes included them and I, I, I had one years ago which kind of led me to have a pause on scroller box for a while because it was just a novelty item and fair enough if you've pitched it as that but it, it's a main ingredient and yeah I'm not a fan you can tell. The Daler Simply paint marker it's pretty much like a Posca pen it's got quite a wide nib and it's a little bit harder than a Posca nib is but you pretty much shake it, you pump it and you draw with it. I'd say the differences are it, it's a black acrylic ink in there but it doesn't quite seem as black or as pigmented as a Posca for example. But that aside I was pretty impressed with it, it had a good flow and yeah it was all right, it was good. The Sennelier paints I think we've had these before in Upcrate and I think we had some pretty similar colours. I haven't got them to hand right now as they're at my other studio. But I quite like the packaging, I think it's a bit environmentally friendly as well. The paint itself is quite runny and smooth but it is a soft bodied paint. But I wouldn't say it was like a craft acrylic, it actually has a nice amount of pigmentation in it. And I do quite like Sennelier's products. The Pro Art brush is very nice, it's got a nice snap to it and like I mentioned before it's a size 6, very nice, it didn't clog up with the paint a lot, can't grumble. So those are the ingredients and what is the prompt? The prompt is fractured figures. Oh and before we go any further, the candy which we had was popping candy. And I don't mind popping candy, it was very nice, it was very fun. So what's going on screen right now? Well, I'd kind of got an idea in my head straight away with this one, but I just wanted to try it out first. As we only had six sheets in the pack of paper, I didn't want to waste them on an idea, so I just went straight in a sketch pad. I quite like the idea of fractured figures being the prompt, and I wanted to do my character, I suppose, crumbling apart and having a fractured sort of existence. I kind of like this idea quite a lot, however this mock-up I didn't like the colour scheme I used. I think the red looked a little bit grim and I didn't really like the skin tone colour I'd used but then I'd only got three colours to work with. However, I carried that across onto the actual surface and decided to just swap those colours around a little. The pencil I used was from last month's scroll box. There was no way I was going to mark anything out with that Koenor pencil. I, I just don't like them. I thought I would swap her blue hair from the concept sketch for red hair and I, I'm really glad I did that, which meant I could have a better colour in the background. Now. We all know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, acrylic paints are not my favourite. 
and I still stand by that. I used to use them all the time many years ago and stopped in favour for less messy materials, something that's a little bit more portable and easier for me to use. I don't think I've helped myself in the past by using lots of cheap brands and combining them with better brands and not having consistent results, which just has left me frustrated. With these all being the same though, I'm, I'm okay with that, I'm okay. I, it's still not my favourite medium, but I actually did quite enjoy using this box and I'm actually quite glad a paint marker was thrown in there too. I pumped that quite a lot to get it going because I wanted to do a gradated background and I wanted the right hand side of the painting to be black and I wanted it to be merging into blue. And this was good because whilst I was doing that I was adding in all of the outlines for the fragments of this character. And by this stage as well I was so happy I'd stuck with red rather than going with the blue from the concept sketch. The paint itself was really nice to apply, it was buttery but it wasn't gloopy or horrible, it spread over the page quite nicely. It wasn't 100% opaque and it does mention in the scroller zine to add a little bit of white in there, but by adding another coat of the same colour without adding white into it, I gained results I was quite happy with and it actually darkened the colours a little bit more as well, which again I was quite on board with. One of the things I wish they would have done with this box though, and they could have omitted the pencil for this, was to put a different sized brush in as well as the one we already have. I, I appreciate the surfaces we have can't be any bigger than the box and I get that, but sometimes a size 6 is just a little bit too big to get some details in, especially if you're that kind of artist who likes to add details. The one we did get was ideal for larger areas and it did give a nice even coverage and it would have been really nice to have one perhaps a size 4 just to add some more details in. Although saying that we did get a paint marker and that does help for black outlines but I'm going to want to add some shine to this character's hair and I can't do that very easily with the size brush that was in there. It was possible but didn't need to be that hard. And plus, I really just don't like them pencils. I personally just don't see the point in them. No pun intended. Or was there? To create the gradient effect with the black paint and the blue paint, I pumped the marker onto the page so there was a nice little pool of it and gradually introduced that blue paint into there, which gave quite a nice smooth transition. And I went over the blue again in another coat just to darken it. So any any areas where it didn't look like it blended so well, you can't tell. I mixed up a very blue mauve colour for her t-shirt and then added some blue to the red to create a shadow for her hair and also add some more hair details in there. I quite like the fact that even her hair was fractured and I still wanted it to look like hair, I didn't want it to just be this flat block of colour because I think it probably wouldn't have looked that convincing. So adding those hair details in there at first with that dark colour was just perfect and that sort of gave me a template to work around for the other shadows and highlights. The paper itself, I haven't even spoken about that really. It's a nice heavyweight paper and it has a canvas-like texture to it. In fact, I'm pretty sure back in my very early college days, I remember using this as well and quite liked it. I thought it was a nice surface to paint on with these paints. The grain wasn't too much where it affected any details, but it was there enough that if you wanted to be a bit more expressive that you could. And what I was quite impressed about was how well it took paint markers. There was no chewing of the paper there and it worked very nicely. It also took lay as well, there were a few coats of paint especially around the hair area and still adding more to it now with the paint marker, not a problem, it stayed really nice and flat actually. And the acrylic paints themselves did dry quite nice and flat which is what I quite like about these acrylics, again when I've used them in the past you've had different shininess levels and that, that doesn't that doesn't sit well with me. I don't want matte areas and shiny areas on somewhere I've tried to blend, so that's not the case with this. 
the white paint was just about opaque enough to just need one coat. I mean, two coats really would have made it stand out, but I was quite happy with one. And it was quite a struggle, again, adding that detail in with such a large brush. If you're gonna do that, or if you struggle with trying to get details on large brushes, a little advice is don't load your brush up completely full of paint, just literally dip the tip in and you're just gonna have to go back and forth more rather than actually trying to do it in one go. You've got to be patient. I think with the addition of highlights on here now, it is starting to look a little bit more convincing and it was time to just add in a very subtle shade of skin tone. Again, that's just the red and the white to mix the pink. I added it obviously where the shadows would be and also around the edges of where the cracks would be so it would look more solid as if it was breaking apart. I also added a few details to her face and went in there very carefully with the marker pen for the eyes and a little tip as well, you don't need to press down too hard because that nib's quite solid, you, d you don't really need to gouge it in. Basically heavy handed me had to take a step back and more careful version of me had to go in there. But luckily it was just for a short time. I added a darker colour for the lips and also a couple of streaks of white for where her teeth would be and she kind of looks a little bit more in keeping with what's going on in the picture. A little bit shocked and surprised. I felt obliged to use this pencil so I just added a few other fracture lines in there but I was going to do it all over but I, I, I hate this pencil, can't you tell? I hate, I love this box to be honest but this pencil, it's let it down. And I also think it is like a random addition that Scroller Box has put in there because the one in the magazine is different to the one I've got. What's that all about? Oh please just stop putting them in there, they're awful. At least on their own anyway. Another paintbrush. I'm sorry, I'm a bit ranty here, aren't I? I don't mean to be, let's get back to waffling. So we're pretty much all done now, the signature's going on. All in all, I have really quite enjoyed this box and if you want me to do a beyond the box, please let me know and I can come up with a couple of projects if you're struggling or if you just want to see what else I can do with this. It was quite nice to get stuck into some nice thick medium and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the prompt as well, it was good, it was good apart from that pencil, but apart from that it was good. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this video, there should be a couple on screen now, this is quite close to one I released very recently so please make sure you've caught up with that and I also want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video, bye!